Hey guys, Sean here and welcome to another Lightroom tutorial. I've been getting a lot of requests to do some portrait uh, tutorials. So basically I'm going to take you through my workflow and show you the easiest, most quickest ways uh, to obtain a nice looking image just like the one you see right here. This is Charmaine. You might have seen her on another video that I've done on a behind the scenes photo shoot that I did with her. If you haven't seen that video, go ahead and click right here and it'll take you to that video. So this is the image that we're going to end up with. So let's go ahead and go into our image here in Lightroom. Okay, so if you're going to crop an image, that's the, probably the first thing you want to do. At least that's what I do. Um, I you want to jump right here right underneath the uh, histogram there's a grid icon here click on that and to the right you'll see a little padlock if you click it it unlocks it if you click it it locks it if it's locked then if you try and scale everything will move proportionally but if you unclick it then you can move all the edges as you see fit in this case we want to remove her arm from there and bring this up just a little bit I want to leave a little mystery to the image so that way you don't know where she's at you don't know if those are her hands or somebody else's hands or so forth okay so let's quickly jump in here the first thing I want to do is lighten up the image sometimes I'll do this before white balancing I just I want to get my exposure right and that way I can see the colors for what they are because if they are darker then sometimes the colors are a little they appear to be a little oversaturated so I'm going to bring this up to about oh about 30 all right, so that, that looks pretty good. So without um, overexposing it, as you can see, when you bring up the, uh, the fill light, you tend to get a little bit of noise in the background. But in this case, in this photo, it really doesn't matter because we're going to um, darken all that background. Now, real quick, guys, I am working in JPEG, and there's a reason for this. I want to show you that you can work in post-production with JPEG. However, there are some limitations. You can go buck wild. It's not that you can scale all your highs and blacks and colors and uh, darks and all that stuff as there is very little information in JPEG images. You don't have all the information that you do in RAW. But if you set up your shoot right and you're going to do minimal to moderate post-production work, then you can get away with doing some pretty good post-production work with a JPEG. And this is a JPEG. If I showed you, you guys saw the image. If I didn't tell you that this wasn't a JPEG, you wouldn't have, you'd be none the wiser. All right, so now that we've uh, added a bit, little bit of fill light, that looks pretty good. I don't need to do a whole lot to the lighting as the lighting is pretty good. I want to come in here and just adjust my white balance a little bit. I want to bring it down, not too much, to about maybe six, uh, even six is too much. Uh, let me leave it at five. You can always dial it in if it's uh, not behaving. So in this case, let me choose five. And that looks pretty good. Let's compare it to what it was before. So again, brighten up the image, brought down the yellows a little bit. If you're in raw, you definitely have a lot more flexibility with the white balance here. Uh, it doesn't affect, there's still somewhat of a bluish tint to this. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is remove some of the blemishes. So if we go up here to the spot removal tool, which is just under the histogram, uh, we can remove some of these blemishes. I usually select the heel tool. So I'm going to click on some of these blemishes. There's not really any in this photo. Um, she's got pretty good skin. So at this point, I'm just being really anal retentive and removing some of these, uh, these blemishes just to make her face smoother. That way I don't have to use the brush tool so much and exaggerate that. So I, I wanna make sure you guys understand that you don't have to do a whole lot sometimes to your images. Uh, to get a very nice clean professional look uh, in this case um, less is more okay so now that we cleared the blemishes off her face uh, well like I said there wasn't a whole lot uh, we can start clearing up give a little bit of clarity uh, drop down the clarity on her face around the surface of her face so that way it doesn't look so harsh the shadows and the lines in her face as this is a very sharp image but before we do that let's do a quick comparison how it looked before so as you can see it's starting to clean up really nicely all right so let's go back into the image here and let's go back up to the top here to our brush tool again right underneath the underneath the histogram if you select the brush tool click new then you can choose clarity again clarity we don't want to overdo it we want to leave it as natural as possible but smooth it out uh, you can leave your flow and density up to 100 and your feather wherever you see fit. Let's go ahead and start painting around the bigger surface areas. 
don't worry about being so perfect and getting all the little nooks and crannies. We just want to generally cover her face as much as possible. Um, don't get around the lips and the, around the eyes because you want to leave those details there, those sharp details. Photos like this, everything is set in the eyes. You don't want to take away from the eyes. If you leave anything in focus, let it be your eyes and you'll have a great picture. So at least most of the time. All right, so I finished painting in her face. Like I said, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. If you want to see, if you want to get closer and be more precise, you can use this tool right here at the bottom. It says Show Selected Mask Overlay. If you check it, then it'll highlight all the areas that you've painted over. Uh, again, if you want to be a little more precise. So you can go ahead and uncheck that, and as you can see, it smoothed out her face. And if you want to see how that looks with or without it, you can go ahead and turn off the layer here by selecting this turn off brush adjustment switch. If you turn it off, you can see the before and after. It makes a world of difference. Now the next thing you want to do is adjust the sharpness around the eyes. And again, going back up here, selecting new, and we're going to adjust the sharpness. Now the image is very sharp. But as you can see, we're going to get a little closer that adding a little sharpness actually helps. Um, let's bring it down to 50, right? That's good right there. We don't have to go too much. So let's start painting around the um, eyelashes and around the edges of the eye and just bring out the detail and sharpness in the eye. So as you can see, it looks pretty good. Let's do the same thing to the other eye. Try not to get the eyeball um, if you're doing this, if you have portraits that you're working on. Um, just leave the eyelashes and around the eyes, it really pops out at you. While we're here, you can do the eyebrows as well. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. Yeah. Your preference, whatever you want to do. This is just my workflow. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom back out. I think that little bit definitely helped and uh, really makes those eyes pop. The next thing I want to do is enhance the iris of the eye. Again, nothing exaggerated. You want to make sure that you keep it simple. Follow that rule. Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. I'm not calling anybody stupid. Just uh, making a point. Uh, Alright, so here we want to adjust the iris enhance. Now, bring it down a little bit to about 41. You don't want it to be too bright. Uh, you know, doesn't need to be that bad. Uh, saturation, I don't need to add any more saturation. We'll leave it down at 13. And right here, about 50. The same thing with the clarity. Okay, again, just paint around the outside, the brown area. Don't paint around the black. Um, you can if you want to, but I prefer not to. Uh, I, I like the contrast between the dark and the, and the light there. So as you can see, it's already starting to make a subtle difference. Nothing too heavy. And that's what we want so let's zoom back out very nice this image is already starting to look a hundred percent better than what we started with let's go back and take a look at our other image what we started with before and after yeah there we go so this is a before and this is the after a lot lighter uh, a lot smoother uh, let's go down here and adjust some of the color a little bit um, let me bring down the blues, the primary, the blue primary, just give it a little bit more of a cinematic look, about 12. There we go. That, that looks pretty good. Uh, and then the other thing I want to do is get rid of all this back here and her arm. I, again, I wanted to bring a little bit more mystery to the image. So if we can darken up her background and leave her, her face as the main um, object or subject at this point. So let's remove the arm in the image. Let's go to exposure, drop down the exposure and drop down the brightness all the way down to zero. And let's go ahead and start painting in here. As you can see, it's already disappearing. Yay, magic of post-production. Let's go ahead and paint around here as well and get rid of all that noise. Okay, so we painted in all this area here. So now it just looks like her hands or it could be somebody else's hands. 
you don't know. Now, one more thing I want to change before moving on is the um, paint on her nails. It doesn't match the image, so what we can do here, again, create another brush, and we're going to go down to saturation. Choose the image color. I, I think I'm going to choose like a, a bronze or a yellow. Yeah, that's good right there. And just drop down the saturation. And in this case, you want to use the auto mask. So if you click on the auto mask here, it'll stay and paint within the nails and it won't go out go outside of it. So it just makes it a little easier to work with. It doesn't always work. So in this case, it will work just fine. It's like something off the fifth element when that girl's painting her nails. Uh, this is pretty cool. So you can do those kind of things in here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and finish it off by adding a vignette. Uh, you scroll to the bottom over here on your right and under effects and under high priority, the post crop vignetting. You want to make sure you bring that slider down, let's say to about 54. That looks pretty good right there. Yeah, that looks nice. And just a hair more. All right, so now the main focus is her face. Uh, we got rid of the background. We just gave her a little bit of fill light, sharpened her eyes, and softened up her skin. A few little elements, nothing heavy, and here is the final image. All right, guys, so if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you. If you'd like to see other tutorials, please let me know, and I will work on some more for you. In the meantime, go ahead and click right here to check out both my previous videos on Charmaine's photo shoot and also my previous Lightroom tutorial. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a wonderful week.